Sister Act 2, Back in the Habit, is a 1993 cult classic and one that continues to entertain and inspire new generations. Given its powerful songs, amazing cast, and a heartwarming story believing in yourself, no matter the odds. Although the movie didn't do quite as well as Sister Act 1 at the box office, it did become a fan favorite, partially due to its groundbreaking fusion of gospel, hip-hop, and R&B. Who can forget a mouth's high note with Oh Happy Day? Or Rita and Tanya's goosebump inducing His Eye is on the Sparrow? Or the groove in your seat number, Joyful Joyful? Now, nearly 30 years later, Sister Act 2 is about to get a sequel with Sister Act 3 in the works. As joyful joyful as the news is, it is tinged with some sadness, because since 1993, seven actors have passed away. Today we pay tribute to them and their careers as entertainers. Mary Wicks played Sister Mary Lazarus, the tallest of the nuns and driver of the school bus, something she's proud of taking great offense when asked if she'd be driving the kids to Hollywood, replying, I can drive anything on wheels. You got a problem with that? Mary Wicks was an acclaimed actress of stage and screen, with a stellar career including playing the first Mary Poppins, comedic roles alongside Lucille Ball, and also an appearance on the hit TV show MASH. Her last performance was in the Disney movie The Hunchback of Notre Dame, playing Laverne, one of the gargoyles. Sadly, in October of 1995, while Mary was in hospital, she fell and broke her hip. Complications due to her subsequent hip surgery took her life. Mary passed away on October 22nd, 1995 in Los Angeles, California. She was 85 years old. James Coburn played Mr. Crisp, the grumpy school administrator of St. Francis Academy who even says the school would be more valuable as a parking lot. Mr. Crisp is highly suspicious of new nun Sister Mary Clarence, who he ends up calling Sister Mary Fake. In James Corbin's heyday, he was an action star known for movies like The Magnificent Seven, The Great Escape, and the James Bond spoof film, Our Man Flint. He was also close friends with the late martial arts star Bruce Lee, acting as a pallbearer at his funeral. In 1999, James picked up an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for his role in the movie Affliction. Coincidentally, Whoopi Goldberg hosted the Oscars that year. James continued to work for the rest of his life. Sadly, on November 18, 2002, he died of a heart attack in Beverly Hills, California. He was 74 years old. Michael Jetta played the humble, but tough when he needed to be, Father Ignatius. Who can forget him tricking Mr. Crisp into a closet so he can spoil the kids' singing competition? Michael's career includes blockbuster movies such as The Green Mile, Waterworld, and Jurassic Park 3. But fans of Michael Jetta were left stunned when in 1997 he revealed that he was HIV positive. The disease can weaken the central nervous system, and six years later, on March 30, 2003, Michael had an epileptic seizure in his Los Angeles home. The seizure prevented Michael from breathing, and he died of asphyxiation. Michael was only 50 years old. Robert Pastorelli played Joe, the pushy agent of Dolores Van Cartier. You might remember Joe telling the sisters that he loved their work and asked if they had representation, proclaiming, God is good, but can he get you your own dressing room? Robert Pastorelli had a long career of television appearances, most notably the reoccurring character of Eldon the Painter on Murphy Brown. His film credits include Beverly Hills Cop 2, Eraser, Striking Distance, and Dances with Wolves. In 1999, Robert's life changed forever when his partner, Sharmone Jonovich, died of a bullet shot to the head. Robert said that she accidentally shot herself during an argument with him and the death was initially ruled accidental. But in 2004, the police reclassified the death as a homicide and were reportedly ready to charge Robert with her murder. On March 8, 2004, Robert was found dead in his Hollywood home. The cause of death was a heroin overdose. He was 49 years old. Whether or not Robert killed his partner and mother to their daughter is still undetermined. Bernard Hughes plays Father Maurice, the principal of St. Francis Academy. You recall him clashing with Sister Mary Clarence over entering the kids in the all-state singing competition. Thankfully, Sister Mary Clarence does not take no for an answer. Bernard Hughes was a Tony Award winning actor and played over 400 different roles on stage, but you'll probably remember him more for films like Tron, The Lost Boys, and Doc Hollywood. Bernard sadly died on July 11, 2006 in New York City. 
His cause of death was simply old age. He was 90 years old. Brad Sullivan played Father Thomas, the gruff Latin teacher whose lessons are so mind-numbingly dull he can even put students to sleep. But you certainly wouldn't drift off to sleep if you ever got in a vehicle with him, that's for sure. Brad Sullivan was an actor of stage and screen, and appeared in many famous movies such as The Untouchables and Chevy Chase's 80s classic, Funny Farm. But 90s kids probably remember him best for the movie Bushwhacked, where he played the old scout master who got replaced by a criminal in hiding. Brad sadly died of liver cancer in New York City on December 31st, 2008. He was 77 years old. And finally, we pay tribute to Ellen Dow. Appearing in both Sister Act 1 and 2, Ellen played the colorful and expressive nun of small stature. Although only having a singing part and being credited simply as choir nun, Ellen's personality shines through and grabs your attention, making her a memorable part of the ensemble. Ellen would go on to achieve fame in the 1998 movie The Wedding Singer, playing Rosie, the rapping grandmother who pays Adam Sandler with meatballs. Ellen continued to work until the ripe old age of 99. On May 4th, 2015, Ellen passed away in Los Angeles, California. The cause of death was pneumonia. She was 101 years old. Although with the passage of time, the actors we love eventually pass away, some naturally, others in tragic or even questionable circumstances, their work lives on in the performances they gave us. Sister Act 2 will continue to be a special movie for generations to come, and the actors who gave us their best will never be forgotten.